Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Slescu, owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. And today we're going to be taking a look at some of my models. It's a show and tell, and I'm going to show you all my dwarf warriors. So let's go down and check them out. Now today I'd like to give a very special shout out to Billy Smith. Now Billy Smith has sent me something that I have been waiting for for a very long time. And this is a really cool thing. I will show you what it is here. I'll just open this up. Now he sent this all the way up from the United States of America, which is like 18 million countries away from Canada. No, I'm just kidding, it's right on the border. But anyway, he sent me six pieces that I was missing to my old Dwarf Warriors. Now, I was trying to make the Dwarf Warriors for Warhammer Age of Sigmar, and I was able to play with them that way for a very long time, until the most recent Cities of Sigmar book, and of course the new Warhammer 3.0, where they finally got rid of all the old compendium models. But this is something that I was trying to get for a very long time. These are single hands holding this style of hammer. And I only needed six, and I tried with uh, a lot of people, of course, on Facebook groups, and, you know, it was sort of like, yeah, yeah, I'll send those, and I never saw them. And uh, this has been going on for a long time, but thanks to Billy, finally somebody sent me these six missing hammers. So now I'm going to show you what the warriors look like. So here we have a block of 40 dwarf warriors. Actually, it's really 34 because I was missing the six with this hammer, as you see here. Now, these dwarfs I wanted to paint in um, with Queen Helga. Now, I've got a Queen Helga model from a very long time ago. That was a white metal model for a special scenario back in the late 1980s. And if you've played that scenario, let us know in the comments down below. That model actually lasted a long time. But what I have here is these are supposed to be dwarfs that are fighting in the forest. And when uh, Games Workshop came out in 2019 with the new Age of Sigmar, actually, pardon me, 2015, when it was still really kind of loose and do what you want ish, um, I thought I would make a unit of dwarfs that would be with Queen Helga fighting in the woods with some help from the wood elves. And of course, all of this is not gold, it's actually supposed to be wood. As if the dwarfs had to move away from the mountains and get more into forests and whatnot, and they didn't have all the metal resources that they used to at one point in time. Now, as you can see, each of the shields has this flying hammer emblem. And if you ever bought the Dwarf Warrior model kits, you know that these originally came in boxes of 16, and there was many different dwarf shield patterns, and they were not just, you know, 40 of these in a box. So as you could uh, gather, I used multiple boxes in order to get all these different shields. This, of course, was also in a time when I had a lot of these Battle for Skull Pass dwarfs. And of course, you can see that this is the commander out of that. And this is the original icon bearer. I added in a banner bearer from the kit itself. And this is sort of a tribute to, I guess, uh, Lord of the Rings with their tree icon. And I kind of use that as a thing for Gyran, which of course is the realm of the forest. And as you can see here, well, <laughs> these guys are getting very far away from the camera. <laughs> Come on back. But you can see they've got a lot of uh, forest colors on them. So I will actually look at these closer in detail. But again, you can see some really cool things going on here with the different models. So here we have our command crew, which of course consists of a musician, a banner bearer. We also have an icon bearer and our champion here. And if you notice on the champion's base, there's a little purple thing. That is actually a snail from the old Bretonian models. And I painted him up because again, this is supposed to be in the forest and I thought it'd be kind of cute if he had a snail on his base. But the only thing that isn't matching is that shield emblem, which of course is a hammer striking an anvil, but I didn't actually have any of the flying hammers in order to scrape that off of the shield and put a flying hammer there. You can see his satchel in the back, which of course is leather. And again, very nicely done. I always like this uh, champion guy. 
if we take a look at our our icon bearer here again you can see the nice detail i didn't paint his eyes in which is kind of unusual for me maybe i'll go back and do that later you can see the uh, runes here are carved out of wood that same sort of albatross color of wood that i used in the past so your xv88 paint colors oops just there we go again you can see how nice it looks from the back as well as the front and another one of the old Battle for Skull Pass models. Now looking at the banner, it's sort of hard to see the dwarf holding it. But again, you can see this is all hand-painted with that tree emblem. And of course, our little scroll work around the edges of the banner. Again, another one of the older dwarfs. Uh, from the back, you can see uh, leather. There, you can actually see that I have painted his eyes in. And there's that flying hammer again. And then our drummer. Now he doesn't have uh, like spiky horns. These are actual horns from the old Tomb King models. There was an option in there for these goat horns and I thought it would actually be kind of cool to have a drummer with goat horns. Then again we've got our drum there. No metal on the drum. This is all wood carved. Um, little ha hammer here and there. And I do believe this drum actually came from the Thunderer's kit, as well as the beard with that hammer in place. So again, you can see the nice detail work on our command crew of those 40 models. Lots of fun to paint. Here we have two warrior models. And the one thing I do like about the Age of Sigmar with these on round bases is it gave you the opportunity to make dynamic poses, which is what was missing from these models if you look at them in Warhammer Fantasy on square bases, where everybody had to match in the squares so they fit all tight in formation. You couldn't get an arm sticking out like this with a hammer over his head in that position. The best you could get was a hammer by his side all tight up against his face, and that was all 40 of your guys or whatever how big you wanted to make that unit were all looking the same but with this you've got the nice arm coming back as if he's swinging in to hit a goblin or whatever and this guy here i made him with an arrow in the shield and the hammer falling down to bust the arrow off so he could continue battling the other nice thing is these came with these little uh, face shields in here so that you can make your warriors with face shields I do believe they were meant for the longbeard units, because you could also build these guys as longbeards. However, I salvaged a lot of these guys from other people's collections at the time, and they were in some pretty raw shape. And the other thing I like is painting hair on these dwarfs, because you can do all different kinds of hair colors. Blonde, black, brown, different colors of browns. Uh, sort of a black with a blue color as well. And again, they've got that flying hammer shield, and all of this detail was done using a dry brush technique. Now thanks to Billy sending up those six arms that I was missing, I can finally finish building these models. And as you can see, they have the big socket in here, just waiting for those arms to be put in them. They've been waiting for at least five or six years, if not a bit longer. Well, 2021 now, and it's 2015 when this first came out built these guys maybe around 2016 just for that uh, you know that army that you could build and uh, so 16 21 that's quite a ways quite many years so it will be interesting to finish off the pose as you can see this guy has his shield raised up as if to protect his face so I might put one of the arms out here as if he's trying to swing across to hit whoever is hitting him in the stomach or maybe even in the knees, depending on how tall the enemy model would be. And again, you can see, like, once I get the arms in, just how nice these models will look. So again, thanks to Billy for sending them up. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at my old Dwarf Warriors, and if you've built those models in the past, or are even building them now for, like, Middle Hammer, or even, you know, odd Warhammer Age of Sigmar games, let us know. I want to see those over on my Facebook page, and I'll leave the link for that in the description below. And until next time, everybody, happy wargaming!